it's this idea of I have a lot of computers, I have a lot of things I want to run on those computers. How can I play that game of Tetris of figuring out which things do I want to run on which computers and how can I make it easier for application developers to use that to ship applications faster, more reliably, uh, and uh, in a way that um, really benefits their end users. What we were trying to do with Google was to externalize this technology called Borg, which is a, you know, a, you know it also has Star Trek origins. So we wanted to create something that was a, a friendlier Borg that would be a good ambassador for the Borg. Uh, which led us to uh, a character in Star Trek called Seven, Seven of Nine. Um, and so Brennan wanted to call the project Seven. Um, we could not get that past the Google trademark police. Uh, so we ended up with the name Kubernetes, and we can tell that story some other time. But um, uh, the number seven became pretty significant to the project. So if you look at the, the Kubernetes logo, it has seven sides. You know, obviously, the, the ship wheel is an homage to the, the idea that you know, Kubernetes is the helmsman of a ship. As we were building Kubernetes, it was clear that we would never be able to go it alone. Um, one of the really powerful things about open source technologies is that you can galvanize a broad community. That community will bring a unique set of perspectives and capabilities and attributes to the project. The highest priority was to really disrupt the industry, and the only practical way to do that was uh, through uh, an open source project that was designed in the open and it had a, a strong and open community around it. Uh, you also have to help, you know, uh, uh, do the, the grunt work. You have to, you know, do the work to get the releases out. You have to support things that are going to refactor and improve stuff in general. You have to help with testing, right? So there's, there's all sorts of things that, that go beyond um, supporting a, a single vendor's uh, solution. when I saw the first job application that listed Kubernetes. And now people joke, it's been around for four years, people look for you know, 10 years of Kubernetes experience and job postings and all that. Hitting uh, 1.0 and the, you know, joining and forming and joining the CNCF were, were also some really great proof points. Are there, are there any that come to mind for you? Walking into a bar in San Francisco and unsolicited hearing someone say the word Kubernetes was, like, <laughs> it was a huge rush. Like, it was like, wow, people actually this care a, about this This is a thing. <laughs> We believe that there's a lot of different ways to consume Kubernetes. You may want to consume a relatively lightweight rendition of Kubernetes uh, that tracks very closely to uh, the upstream community. You may want to consume a version of Kubernetes that is packaged with some proprietary extensions and capabilities that solves uh, problems in a unique way, and that's entirely acceptable. Um, or you may want to consume Kubernetes as a managed service that's provided to you by a cloud provider or someone else, um, and that's entirely acceptable. We initiated almost every significant customer engagement we had uh, with what we call the field engineering deployment. So we'd hired some amazingly smart people that had a significant base of Kubernetes operating experience. Um, and we would then embed them with a customer that was trying to walk their Kubernetes journey. And the thing that was fascinating about that is that it wasn't just about the, the knowledge transfer to the customer. That became something that taught us around what needed to be built. If you look at each of the successful open source projects that we created while we were uh, an independent organization and, and you know, brought back to the open source community, they were all grounded in significant customer problems. Uh, there is a difference between cloud and cloud native. Cloud is like running on somebody else's computers. It's, um, it's really about a service that provides a level of management, whether they're just managing hardware or they're managing a higher level service. And so it's really about outsourcing some of the burden of running and using systems. Cloud native, on the other hand, uh, takes the best aspects of cloud, which I think are you know API driven, self service, and elastic. Takes those things and really thinks about how do we, at a process and tooling and organizational level, really reinvent uh, how we do things to take advantage of that stuff. How do we take advantage of the unique aspects of cloud? Mm -hmm.